friends. I hope your new year is going very well. Matt and I have enjoyed an extended break where we have worked on our businesses and long-awaited house projects. In today's visit, I thought it would be really fun to do a recap of how far the house has come since the channel started about a year and a half ago. Everyone loves a good before and after, right? Then I'm really excited to share with you our plans for 2023 on home decor and remodeling projects. This will involve a good deal of paint, pretty wallpaper, some fresh new art arrangements, and collecting antiques. Let's step back in time and see just how far this house has come since you and I started on this interior design journey. After buying our first house in 2018, we decided our first project would be creating a guest bedroom. Our budget was very tight, so the headboard you see here and the bookcase you'll see later both were found on the side of the road. They were painted, and to the headboard I added a little cottagey touch with decoupage. We replaced the 1960s mirrored bifold doors with ones that were paneled for a little bit of an upgrade. Then it was time to start painting and gathering artwork. With some art I already had on hand and others that I thrifted, I created my first gallery wall. Here is the bedroom finished. It has a clear cottagey vibe with bright, playful colors. With one project down, we were ready to dip our toe into something a little more complicated. We chose to tackle our tiny master bathroom. Matt is building the boxes to create more storage. We were still on a fairly tight budget, and we figured a small space would require less materials. Plus, we still intended to do as much of the work as possible, if not all of it, ourselves. For this project, I tried my hand at wallpaper for the very first time. We replaced the short, built-in vanity with a pedestal sink and added a glass shelf above. I found the containers for our personal grooming items at the thrift store. To add storage, I found a tall basket at the thrift store and sewed a liner for it that would match our color scheme. This is an overview of the entire project. Here are some before and after pictures, and if you would love to see all the details from beginning to end, be sure to check out the video in the link below. From this project, we learned that tiny spaces can work if you carefully plan your storage. We also learned that larger items can be found at a discount. Online, this sink was $3.50. We found it for $40. Next up was a room swap. With a room too large for an office and workout area, we decided to make it a guest bedroom. Throughout all of these projects, I was studying books, magazines, Pinterest, Instagram, looking for ideas to develop and define my style. In this makeover, you will clearly see an English country cottage style coming to life. With this project, we had a bit more money to work with, and I was determined to squeeze my decorating dollars as far as they would go and to clearly express my English country cottage style. If you are interested to see the design process of thrifting, planning, DIY projects, and creating a gallery wall, there is an entire series on this English cottage bedroom on my channel. Most things in this room, including the furniture, textiles, decor, and artwork, were found at thrift stores, yard sales, and antique stores. For example, the antique headboard was less than $5 at a thrift store. With savings like these, I was able to splurge on the wallpaper, which is one of my favorite parts of this space. Our projects are getting bigger, and as you can see, we are ready to tackle the back porch. Fortunately, we own a painting company, so we're able to do this work ourselves. With a project of this scale, there were many, many DIY projects. These English carriage lanterns were thrifted for $5 each. 
Swapping out the light fixtures made a tremendous difference, upgraded the entire area, and helped to set the style. Some of the projects that added the very best impact for our dollar was addressing some of the architectural details like the screen back doors. We found these at Home Depot and they added so much charm. One of our theories in home improvement is just that. It's improvement. We're going for good, better, best. Not necessarily perfect. Just doing the best we can with what we have. Over time, as you look back at the progress that you have made on your home, you will be surprised how far you've come. Little by little, you will reach your goals. If you are feeling overwhelmed or discouraged with the spaces that you live in, let me share with you the lines from a children's song. It went something like this. It's what you do with what you've got. Even if that's not a lot, it's what you do with what you've got that pays off in the end. Sure, we did spend some money doing this patio makeover, but a lot of it was elbow grease. Just getting out there, cleaning, fixing, mending, painting. Good news, my friends. Elbow grease is free. And back inside the house for our final project in the fall of last year, we did a pantry makeover. This dingy, dark, uninspiring space had never been made ours. So we took the same ideas of mending, cleaning, painting, and doing DIY projects to give this space a homey feel. Here, you see that we have found a beautiful antique cabinet on Marketplace. This is a wonderful resource for any of you looking to upgrade or switch out your furniture on a budget. It has been a joy to have all of you following along with our home remodel projects, my interior design discovery journey, the DIY projects, thrifting adventures, and so much more. Have you noticed we've reached 15,000 subscribers? I would like to take this moment to thank each one of you for your kind support, your valuable opinions, your sweet words, for it is each of you that makes Stone Cottage Home possible. Now friends, you're invited to join us this year as we tackle three more rooms to bring more of that English country style to our home. Matt and I spend most of our evenings together in this cozy living room, and there are many features that we like and plan on keeping. There are a few we would like to change. I don't understand blue wave wallpaper with pink and mauve rose borders? It is original to this 1960s house. While the texture and rich color of the red brick wall adds warmth to the room, we would like to remove the stair step, spindle, bookcases, and are considering doing a built-in that would correspond with a mantle that actually fits around the hearth. And the ceiling, yes, popcorn with glitter. That needs to go. Now let's take a look at some inspiration pictures for the living room. Here are some ideas for what we would like to do with a mantle around the fireplace. I like the picture frame molding added to the window seat and the blue plates on the wall, plus the calm color palette. Beautiful trim and molding on the fireplace and mantle, blue and white textiles mixed with vintage paintings, another color option for a fireplace surround, and brass lamps. From the living room into the dining room, the area is small and we would like to lighten and brighten, perhaps add color on the island, relocate or replace the hutch to provide more space. Only one of the original lace blinds is left from the 60s. We'll replace those and add other curtains to frame it off. The chandelier stays. I'm considering stripping the bar stools to lighten the color and as I said, I think painting the island would be fun. Now for a color palette and inspiration pictures for the dining room. I would like to create a fresh country garden feeling in this area with floral wallpaper, perhaps with birds on it, and a muted blue, green, and taupe color palette. These are some fabrics I thought that might look good around the window. 
with perhaps a bamboo shade. I must confess, I am already keeping my eye out for antique table and chairs and grandfather clock on Marketplace. And finally, the kitchen. I already love my kitchen. I love the size, the layout, and the function. It is perfect for our family. Plus, I am convinced there is a brighter, cottage-style kitchen hidden inside this one. With some imagination and elbow grease, a lot of paint, new hardware, perhaps a white stove, I can see this coming to life already. Of all three spaces, I am most excited about transforming this kitchen into an English countryside cottage kitchen. Naturally, I would love to include some blue and white accents from my dish collection. So much has changed since the channel started and it has been a joy to share all of it with you. I am even more excited about what's ahead. Be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss this next year of creating an English country style home with curated home decor, DIY projects, and more. If you enjoyed today's visit, I think you would also enjoy our English Cottage Bedroom Makeover series. I will link that for you here. Thank you for stopping by today, and until next time, take care.